and two. They stack the line of scrimmage. There's Dom Hill. There he goes. Dom Hill 40. Dom Hill 30. Downhill, Dom Hill. Touchdown. 61 yards. Smokey.com presents the Texas High School Football Show on 365 Sports. Brought to you by Peter Chevrolet. Medlock, they fake it to him. James Keeper off the left side, breaks the tackle into the secondary, skips away, and he will score. Touchdown, Duncanville. Here's David Smoke. Well, it's another week of Smokey.com presents the Texas High School Football Statewide Podcast, and we'll feature two programs today. One that is among the best tradition-rich programs ever, In Longview, we'll hear from head coach John King and also Melissa High School, the Cardinals. They had not been in existence forever. Got back in the existence in the early parts of the 2000s, won a state championship in 2011. And this past weekend, they beat the defending champions unbeaten Argyle 21 to nothing. We'll hear from Matt Nally, their head coach, in just a moment. Also, Look at the elite games from pigskinprep.com. Thanks to Jerry Forrest. Thanks to Peter Chevrolet, Randy Peters, Buick, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge Ram, Fiat, and Longview. They've got the full meal deal. And, of course, you can go to peterscars.com for all the information you need. Randy Peters, the owner of Peter Chevrolet, the sponsor of this show. One game I want to highlight before we get to a couple of the best wins from last week, and that also includes Melissa's win against Argyle, is a, a private school six-man game in Waco. Live Oak and Vanguard, both 6-0. and oh, They play this week. I, I, I put up on my website, Smokey.com, every week we have a pick em, 20 games statewide, some east, some central, some out in West Texas or the Panhandle, in the Valley, San Antonio, uh, the 409, the Golden Triangle, Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth. And he's like, hey, you forgot a game. Vanguard and Live Oak, two 6-0 teams in, in six-man private school games. Just want to throw that out there. Now, the best wins of last week, and as I mentioned, Melissa 21 Argyle, nothing has to be one of them, and we'll hear from Matt Nally from Melissa in a moment. But also Crawford, Greg Jacobs. Crawford beat Toler 19-7. That's a very nice win in Class 2A as Crawford, the Pirates, of course, year in and year out, are so good. In the Battle of Spring ISD, not that they're the only schools, but Westfield beat Spring. They go back and forth. Westfield, of course, has been a, a, a juggernaut and Spring with what they do. Uh, obviously very good as well. And then Katie got back at Tompkins. Tompkins shocked the world last year and beat Katie. Katie won the game this past weekend and they kind of like reemerged as who they are as one of the great programs in the history of the state of Texas in high school football. Now, what I want to discuss, and we'll hear from him a little bit later on, is Longview football coach John King. I've known John since he arrived. He was on staff with Pat Collins, hired from Louisiana. Pat Collins, a former college coach who won a national championship at Northeast, Northeast Louisiana, what it was called at that particular time. John King was on his staff. Pat Collins came in and took over the Longview Lobos. They had played for a state championship with head coach Robert Barrow in 1997, and then they fell on some tough times. Pat Collins came in, righted the ship, and, of course, then handed the baton to John King, who took over at Longview in 2004 as the head coach when Pat Collins decided he was going to retire. What John King has done in that amount of time is actually insane. His record at Longview, insane. What he's accomplished at Longview, crazy. They play Highland Park this week. And we'll talk about that and much more. Longview football, the Lobo fans that I've known them forever, they were so thirsty for a state championship. Everybody else around them in East Texas, John Tyler, Robert E. Lee, which is now Legacy, Marshall, uh, Kilgore, Gilmer, Dangerfield, Carthage, Lufkin, all of the larger schools had won a state championship during the time when Longview was still really, really good. 
And in some cases, in years that Longview had beaten those specific teams, and I'm talking about the bigger schools on the list that I mentioned, they had not won a state title. They're so sick and tired of hearing about that since 1937. Lost in the semifinals in 1975 to Permian. Lost in the state championship in 97 to Katy. Lost in back-to-back -back years in the state title against Lake Travis in that great run that Lake Travis had. Knock it on the door. Lost in a nutcase game against Midway in 2017 in the semifinals up at Allen in that beautiful stadium. It was like, are they ever going to be able to win? They're knocking on the door. They finally broke it down in 2018 when John King and his son quarterback, Haynes King and company, won a state title. But it's not just about that. They finally got it done, thank goodness. But also the pressure that comes with that. Is there a relief? Do you let your guard down? What happens? Everyone's gunning at you. Well, they always were gunning at Longview. So when we come back, my conversation with a great friend, a hell of a football coach, John King, as the Smokey.com Texas High School Football Podcast Show continues in a moment. All roads lead to your largest selection of pre-owned in East Texas. 3306 West Grande in Tyler. It's time for a car buying experience you will enjoy at Peter's Auto Sports. Cars from ultimate luxury to affordable economy. Trucks from work to play to all out adventure. Come by 3306 West Grande in Tyler or visit us online at Peter's Auto Sports and take advantage of our nationwide delivery. It's all here. Peter's Auto Sports in Tyler. For a limited time, refinance your vehicle and have 90 days with zero payments. Only at Genco FCU. Refinancing lowers your rate and you pay less for your car. You can't pass on rates as low as 1.75% for 48 months. Apply online today. Annual percentage rate subject to change without notice. Subject to credit approval, membership eligibility, and loan policies. Go to GencoFCU.org. NCUA equal housing lender. My money, my future, my credit union. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. Lobo's head football coach John King on the Texas High School Football Statewide Podcast brought to you by Peter Chevrolet. So I've always, uh, I'll, I've talked to others about this. You came in that wave from Louisiana with, of course, Pat Collins. There was the Mike Valerie, Dickie Meeks before that. And it was something that really made and turned East Texas football, it, it made them better. And it was already a lot of tradition, as you know, a lot of pride. What, what was kind of going on during that time, if you recall, that the, a lot of guys started to come in from Louisiana? Well, uh, you, you know, in Louisiana, just there's not many of those good jobs available. Either people, you know, uh, got to retire or die. And there wasn't anything going on over there at that time. And uh, I knew that East Texas football, particularly Longview football, was, uh, you know, something special. And, and uh, you know, when Coach Collins brought me over, I was fortunate enough to get my foot in the door and tried to make the most of it. But, you know, uh, as you mentioned, Dickie Meeks, Mike Valvery, uh those guys came over here and, and, and made a good name for themselves and kind of opened the doors up for the rest of us. How long before you think that everyone realized, and, and I know that you guys started to win. It wasn't immediate, but you did win. How long do you think uh, some of the guys who had been entrenched Texas high school football? I mean, hell, now you're the president of the Texas High School Football Coaches Association, which is it's an amazing honor as well. How long do you think before people started to notice, okay, this is th these guys know what they're doing, not that Evangel and Monroe and Wachita and others uh, had not been good, or Shaw. Do you feel like that, that everyone kind of gained respect pretty quickly? 
Well, I think you have to earn their respect, and you do that by doing things right and treating people right and putting a good product on the field. But, yeah, there's good football in Louisiana. It sure is. And, yeah, you know, uh, per capita, I think they may have the most, um, you know, Division One, five-star, four-star talent that there is in the country. You know, there's just not many of them. And, uh, you know, to be able to come over here and compete against the best of the best in Texas high school football was uh, a challenge, but something that, you know, we I particularly wanted to come over and be a part of because I knew it was the best uh, high school football in the country. And that's, that's what I wanted to be, Smokey. I wanted to be a high school football coach. I could care less about the college football. Uh, uh, to me, the biggest impact made is at the high school level, something that, you know, I grew up around. My father was a coach, became a, t- you know, a principal, administrator, and so forth, and just kind of what I wanted to do. When Longview hired Coach Collins and he brought you and others with him, did you ever expect that you would ever stay in Texas as long as you have? I, you keep talking about that's what you want to do, and obviously the coaching here and in the, in the, in the way there's a commitment to high school football is unmatched anywhere. Did you ever expect it would be here? you'd be here for as long as you have been? Uh, after that first season, I don't think I guess I could try it, to be honest with you. But, no, it, uh, I wanted to be somewhere where I could call home. And I immediately, I'm talking about within a month of being at Longview, I knew this place I wanted to be. It's the kids I like to coach, the community I like to coach uh, in and, and, and be a part of. Uh, so there's not many of these in, in the state of Texas. You don't realize that you, you've you been in it a while, but, I mean, a one-horse town, one with great tradition, winning tradition, great community support, and going to have great players to do it with and um you know it's been um been pr- a pretty good match for us you know and i tell people all the time i can't coach everywhere you know and i'm an offensive line coach by trade and got a little bit different personality and mentality towards uh how i go about stuff um uh, you know and but i guess i'm a good fit for here uh i enjoy coaching these kids uh, and, and and being here and, and uh, representing longview high school how much do you miss just sitting around with some of the guys that when you were an assistant coach at Longview or when you took over in 04, uh, some of the guys that were coaching, Mike Owens, Alan Wilson, you know, how, how much did you guys have a, a camaraderie and a chemistry among each other? Uh, it was a great chemistry. And I can tell you, the one I miss the most on a day-to-day basis is Coach Collins. I used to yeah. love hearing his stories, even though I might have heard him five or six times already. But he could tell the same one over and over again, and it always entertained me. But I miss him. Uh, he was a great mentor of mine. And just day-to-day stuff, casual conversation. And, uh, you know, then the great friends that you have, as you mentioned, Mike Owens, Alan Wilson, you, and John Outlaw. Uh, great men, great coaches, had great programs, and, and they were part of East Texas football when maybe it was at its peak, I can tell you, because when they were in early 2000s to 2010, I'm talking about East Texas was was humming, baby, and uh, great guys, and, and all those guys are state championship caliber coaches or, or won state championships, but you know, it's even the other guys, the Scott Surratt's, Jeff yeah. Trailer, uh, mm-hmm. you know, guys like that, Mike Valery, uh, uh, Matt Turner, these guys in East Texas, they're, they're great coaches, they're great people, they're great for kids, and and, and you know it, it's a fraternity, and and you know, and and you just, I mean, you get a newfound respect for everybody when you compete against them and have a chance to watch your program. Uh, you know, Barry Norton yep. became a great friend of mine. Really wasn't uh, when I first got here, but uh, over the last ten years, it's, it's really been a genuine uh, friend and, and guy that's uh, you know uh, influenced me in a lot of ways. You and Barry, and among others, created the East Texas High School Coaches Association. You started having an annual banquet. I've been there on a handful of occasions, been honored by it, which was uh, one of the greatest thrills of my life. But you wanted that area to have kind of its own niche, not just in football, but in terms of growing an association. Um, You know, now you're the president, as I mentioned, of the Texas High School Coaches Association. I mean, you're a Louisiana guy. And now the the respect you've earned as a coach, but as so, also as someone who does it right, what did that mean to you when that when you were when when you heard that? I was totally shocked. You know, I'd been nominated for president elect about three times. I think they only nominated me so they would ha- have a runoff. So I could <laughs> maybe put somebody's vote. But, but uh, you know, it's amazing what can happen when you win a state championship and you got a son that's committed to play for the Aggies. I mean, you get a lot of votes. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. But 
it uh it was a great honor one that uh i don't take lightly you know and, and quite honestly i got emotional smoky and uh teared me up a little bit because here's the old boy from <clears throat> spring hill louisiana all he ever wanted to be was a high school football coach wasn't sure where i'd do it at uh you know at one time in my life what looked like a good job i look at now i'm thinking what was i thinking because i've got the best job in the, in the state of texas in longview high school and uh you know so come a long ways but i think it goes back to treating people right kids coaches opponents fans media anybody i mean you got to do it the right way there's there's enough enough hardship in this profession that you don't need to add to it and i think if you treat people right and do things right and you get your heart's in the right place i think you know good things will happen to you i agree uh, i by the way wrote a letter to those who um I guess vote on who will get into the Texas High School Coaches Association Hall of Honor, and I wrote a letter on behalf of Dennis Alexander, who's not here. He's not in it yet, and uh, I know you know Dennis. He's my God. You talk about yeah. a character, so uh, I'm kind of pushing and pushing and pushing. Speaking of which, Longview High School has been probably as consistent as most any school at the high level. Now I know 5A, but for many many years the highest level, and still could play with anybody at the 6A level and there was always that push it was so close 97 and then of course when you played Lake Travis and you got so close in the loss you know, that was gut-wrenching to Midway when you won the state title all the emotions of an entire town and community exploded do, do you still understand what that meant to Longview High School Lobo fans in general and I know what it meant to you as well I do every day, and uh, it was an important win for this community, and 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 uh, something that they had been uh, been so close, and and yet uh, couldn't get it get get over the hump. But it was huge for this community, and uh, but I see it every day, and it's young, old. Uh, administrators, uh, fans, uh, graduates, alumni of Longview High School. It was important to them, and uh, I'm glad we were able to accomplish that. Uh, and uh, our goal now is to find a way to win them one more because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is this place is deserving of that. It's, it's, it's uh, quite uh, capable of getting another one done, and it just uh, got to keep pushing forward. How much do you feel like also on top of the frustration of being so close that there were others around you that were winning that had won Lufkin, John Tyler, Hell Lee in 04, your first year, uh, obviously Texas High, Marshall. Uh, was that something that kind of added to the aggravation of the drought? No, there's no doubt it did. I mean, you know, it, they, they won it, and we had yet to win one. And, and, of course, you got all those schools you mentioned, along with, you know, Gilmer and yep. Kilgore and, and uh, Carthage, uh, Dangerfield. All these schools are winning championships. We're close. We're playing for it, and we're not getting over the hump. And, yeah, that adds to the frustration. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, wasn't satisfied with what we had, uh, way we had ended it, but uh, I was dang sure proud of what we had accomplished with with uh, our teams. I mean, six um, eight football in the state of Texas. Mm. That's as tough as it is anywhere. I mean, you, it, and and to make it and win a state championship is uh, it takes a great football team and takes a little luck too. And uh, you know, it's it's hard to do every year, but. Still, when you when you make the playoffs, it's trying to find a way to go one and zero each week, yeah. and, and uh, that's still going to be the, the the goal when we get there. John King, head coach at Longview, just a couple more questions. Uh, you you did win it, and you were able to celebrate it with Haynes. Um, do you? You're, I, I from this day, and I've covered it now for forty years. High school football in Texas. I've never seen week in and week out, year in and year out, a team play harder, almost as if you have to cut the head off a snake than Longview has, whether you were a team that could win a state championship, play for one, or one that was, could have won a district title, or one that maybe had to take a step back very rarely. Was there any loss of that edge after winning the state title, or did it actually make it even more difficult? You know, the year after was probably the most difficult year I've ever had coaching just because of the expectations of winning another one. And your son's going to be a senior. He's a highly recruited uh, prospect. And just, uh, you know, the expectations that surround all that. It, it, it was not fun. I, I'll be quite honest with you. Coach Collins told me that immediately after the, we won it. He said, get ready. 
your worst year's coming. Because <laughs> you're going to try to repeat it. Everything you want to do, it's going to be tougher. And it was. And he, the old man has told me so many things, and he's been exactly right on, on uh, dang near every one of them. But, no, that was tough because we had a decent football team. We had a great defense, and we lost a bunch of offense. Lynn trying to, you know, rekindle that fire. I mean, each team's different. And, you know, if we catch a break here, a break there, maybe we do make another run at it. But we didn't catch a break. And, uh, you know, and season ended. And, of course, there was a lot of heartache there. That was from from what December 22nd, 2018 was, as far as the, the, the highest of the highs as being a football coach. When we lost to Dallas Jazz, I think they, November 22nd, 2019, that was the lowest of the lows. You know, uh and but you know that's things you go through as a coach, and and uh, you just got to keep pushing forward. Yeah, but it took a Hall of Famer's son to help maybe create that agony, right? With Emmett Smith's son, he was amazing. <laughs> well, he he had a, he had a role in it, and he sure did. And he was a great player, and but he had a great team he was playing sure on, and, and great teammates. So uh, it wasn't a one man show. It never is here. All right, two more questions. Uh, you mentioned Haynes. I know he's been out. A and M struggling. Obviously, they uh, the expectations, as you mentioned, were as high as they've been maybe in a long, long time. How is he doing? And I know you can't give me too much, but how frustrating has that been for him as well? Uh, you know, he's had a great attitude about it, Smokey. I mean, you know, not much he can do. I mean, it's uh, he's had a. Um, the injury and it's going. It required surgery, and uh, lucky for him, it's, it won't be season ending. I don't think. Uh, I don't know as far as when he'll return, but there is a chance he would return and get some significant playing time. But that's what you know. You can leave out hope for. Uh, but as a kid, that's never missed anything. You know, pretty much. I mean, he missed a couple of games as a freshman for something that happened during the summer. But to be out this long has been. It's been tough, but. Uh, you know, it's it is what it is. It's a game of football, and uh, I know the, the Aggies are struggling right now. But you know, they're gonna find a way to keep pushing through it. And you know, it's just they they got to have something good happen. They hadn't had anything good happen in a while. And it's not necessarily on one person, one side of the ball, or anything. It's as a whole team, and they've got to play better. All right, this week, Highland Park, Randy Allen, great a coach, what he's done there. You guys have met a few times. Your thoughts about yet another showdown in District uh, Seven Five A. Well, we've got our hands full, and I can tell you, I got as much respect for Randy Allen as a coach and a person as I do of anybody in the, you know this uh, in this profession. Great man, and his kids play hard. You talk about ours, how hard they play. The Highland Park's gonna be the same way. Uh, I tell you, if you're talking to their radio guy, I mean, it's it's kind of. Uh, Two similar teams, two similar communities, two similar programs. When you look at the story tradition of, of what they've done throughout the years, uh, they just happen to live on the hilltop. We live in East Texas in the Piney Woods, but uh, it's a one-horse town. They're going to play for their school. Our kids come here wanting to be a Lobo like theirs want to be a Scott. And, uh, you know, they're not going to – they play with a lot of pride. They're not going to beat themselves. They're very disciplined. And he's got a bag of tricks. But very sound in everything they do, uh, you know, and they're going to make it difficult. Tony, I think he's 112 and two mm-hmm. as a head coach at home, which is hard to do against tall grass or anybody. It's unbelievable. John, I'm so proud of what you've done, man. Keep it going. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Have a great week. All right, Smokey. Thank you, man. John Let's King, see. head coach, Longview High School on the Texas High School Football Podcast. All roads lead to your largest selection of pre-owned in East Texas. 3306 West Grande in Tyler. It's time for a car buying experience you will enjoy at Peters Auto Sports. Cars from ultimate luxury to affordable economy. Trucks from work to play to all out adventure. Come by 3306 West Grande in Tyler or visit us online at Peters Auto Sports and take advantage of our nationwide delivery. It's all here. Peters Auto Sports in Tyler. For a limited time, refinance your vehicle and have 90 days with zero payments. Only at Genco FCU. Refinancing lowers your rate and you pay less for your car. You can't pass on rates as low as 1.75% for 48 months. Apply online today. Annual percentage rate subject to change without notice. Subject to credit approval, membership eligibility, and loan policies. Go to GencoFCU.org. NCUA equal housing lender. My money, my future, my credit union. 
At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. I mentioned at the start of the show, one of the great wins this past week uh, in high school football in the state of Texas, Melissa. And I got to tell you, when I saw this score, I was like, what? And I know Melissa's got history and what they've done. They won a state title back in 2011 in Class 2A. But this one surprised me because I know how good Argyle is. And I know they had just beaten La Vega a couple of weeks ago. And we know how good La Vega is with Don Hyde. We're now joined by Matt Nally. He's the head coach at Melissa. The Cardinals coming off a 21-0 win against Argyle. Matt, you and I talked earlier. I got to tell you, when I saw that come down, I was like, okay, something's flipped backwards. How many people probably told you that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, sir, a bunch. <laughs> how how can you put a can you put a number on how big a win that was? Um, I mean, if it was one to ten, um, I mean, obviously it was a ten. Um, it was a big deal for not just our players, uh, our coaches, but also our community. Um, you know, we have high expectations here, and you know, Argyle is kind of the standard in four A Division one, and and to have that success against them on Friday night was big for the whole town. When did you know, and you knew that you guys would have to have a fantastic game plan, you have the talent and the coaching staff, but when did you know sometime perhaps during the week that this could be your year? Uh, Just the calmness of the kids throughout practice. You know, normally, you know, going through that week, uh, that Argyle week, you know, they're always ranked number one when we play them. Um, and, you know, our kids are very, uh, uh, you know, hyped up and, and anxious to play them. And it, we just, it, it was a different atmosphere this year. Um, it, it had nothing to do with a certain point um, or anything like that. It was the entire week, just a calmness with the kiddos and uh, the coaching staff. And um, I knew that we were going to compete. Uh, I did not know that the game was going to go the way it went. Um, But, you know, just super proud of my kids and my coaching staff and and what they accomplished. What was more impressive, and I know that the the most important thing was the win, but you shut them out. I mean, they're they're known for putting up a lot of points. I know La Vega and Argyle, 17-14, that's expected. Both those teams are really good. But the shutout, that offense – yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, when you when you look at it, you see the, the zero. Um, obviously, that's an unbelievable task that uh, that my defense and my defensive staff um, did on Friday night. But, you know, the, really the number sticks out is five. I mean, we forced five turnovers. And I don't know if, if Argyle's turned it over five times the whole year. So that was the biggest deal for me is, is allowing – and um, seeing our kids really uh, have success um, in that atmosphere on Friday night, but really t- scoring and getting points off of turnovers because that defense they have over there is unbelievable as well. Mm-hmm. So that was a big deal for me is the five forced turnovers and then getting 21 points off of turnovers. You guys lost a couple of games. Everyone knows that name of Salina, what it represents in Texas. Memorial out of Frisco beats you as well. Did, did What did you learn from those two losses, or what did the players learn? And I know you said entering the season, you told me this as well, that you guys were very, very young at some key positions as well. Yeah, I mean, that was the biggest deal going into the year. We, we knew that, um, you know, Dave Campbell's ranked us number three. And, you know, I would tell my inner circle, I, you know, that's probably a little too high um, to start the season just because of the fact of, um, we were so young and inexperienced, but I did say after the 10 games, that was probably about right. Um, I felt like we would be varsity ready by that point and, um, and whatnot. So going into that game, I'm first and foremost, the Salina game, um, Salina is an unbelievable program. Salina's 
I mean, they do an unbelievable job coaching those kids and those kids. I mean, if, if my kids were being interviewed right now, they would tell you that um, no one hit harder than Salina. Uh, they're extremely physical, extremely aggressive. Um, and just that whole game, that whole atmosphere going into that, uh, that game was huge. And um, once again, I don't believe in cupcakes. I believe in scheduling really good teams. I don't believe that a cupcake – um, sharpens iron. I believe iron sharpens iron. And playing a really, really good team like Salina, um, I felt like was going to help us, you know, in, in district play. So we had that opportunity to play them. And then we had the opportunity to play Frisco Memorial. And once again, I mean, um, Frisco Memorial has unbelievable players. And we were, you know, once again, I mean, it, they just did a great job of coaching those kids. And they had an unbelievable night that night, uh, throwing and catching the football. So, but here, Melissa, you know, we our program, we don't talk about pre-district. You know, for us, it's all about district play in the playoffs. Um, you know, and I learned that from an article I read from um, Bill Elliott a long time ago about, you know, it's about the playoffs. It's not about, you know, preseason and whatnot. So our, our season, our preseason, we call Halloween. You know, you get to dress up. Uh, to practice essentially. So, you know, our kids, it just wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, our coaches wasn't that big of a deal. It was about us. It was about getting better each week. Um, and at the end of the day, that's all you can hope for is get better each week. Well, and you obviously have, and you, you know, last year your team went 11 and two. Uh, I, there's the history there of Melissa, although there was a down period of time a little bit after the state title in 2011. So you, you mentioned your district. Well, you just beat Argyle. You got Kaufman in there. They're unbeaten with what they've done. Obviously, Paris can be explosive. Uh, uh, didn't you split with them last year? Was that is it in Paris who split with you last year? We they actually um, had COVID, so when we were in district play, we didn't get to play them. And That's then, right. Yes, they That's beat right. Us in the playoffs um, by five or six points, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, 54-49. That was uh that was amazing. But you're in this district now, and when you look at the standings, it's kind of interesting because you see Argyle at the bottom, which we know that they're going to probably fight <laughs> themselves back. And, and then right. what Anna and others are bringing to the table. This is this ought to be fun, right? Right. You know, I mean, we call it the hardest district in the state of Texas, um, especially in 4A. I mean, everyone can play ball. Um, everyone's coached extremely well. Everyone has talent. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a great, it's fun though. You know, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to play anybody that wasn't going to make me better and wasn't going to sharpen me for the playoffs. So for me, the, the district's fun to be a part of. All right, so Matt, you were at Frankston, and it didn't go very well as far as wins and losses. And Frankston's been really kind of – there have been some hits and misses there for a long, long time. Give me the idea of what from Frankston to Melissa. You're on staff uh, there uh, and, and with a coach that had had a lot of success at Melissa. How did all that go down? Did you guys know each other prior to that? Uh, no, sir. Um, what happened was um, I was in Frankston, Texas, and um, – you know, I enjoyed it. it was my hometown. I, mean, I, I love that place and um, they were going to be successful. And um, we had made the playoffs and all these great things. And it was just such a great place to be at. Um, at that time, though, I mean, it's a small school and, and, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats. And, you know, I was the athletic director, they had football coach at a time. I was the assistant principal. Mm. Um, I was the assistant basketball coach, the assistant baseball coach, assistant track. Once again, I mean, it's a smaller school and, um, I just had my third son and my wife was doing an amazing job of raising my kids. Um, and I just felt like it was time for me to, you know, be a part of their lives and whatnot. And my superintendent at Frankston left and got the job in Melissa huh. and he, inter he introduced me to Seth and um, me and Seth were just talking one day on the phone and Seth was like, Hey man, I got a job for you if you want it. And, um, you know, I turned it down. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Thank you so much. And I went and actually visited with Seth um, two times. And um, I, I don't know if you know Seth Stinn, but Seth Stinn is one of the, the greatest people um, you'll ever know and ever be around. He's got the biggest heart. And I just fell in love with uh, his passion for kids and, you know, his passion for Melissa. And uh, it was really, really tough to leave Frankston. Um, once again, like I said, being my hometown. And I had that opportunity to – uh, come to Melissa and they just really to, to take a break. Uh -huh. Um, and, um, so I got here and the first year I was here, um, I was just the assistant head football coach, um, and special teams coordinator, which I loved. I have a passion for special teams. And, um, that year was not good. 
the the football team went one and nine. So um, after that season, uh, Seth made me the uh, strength and conditioning coordinator uh, for off season, which every coach in in the state of Texas, I'm sure, and loves off season. It's just you know you get to build kids and and whatnot. So that was a lot of fun. And then he made me the offensive coordinator uh, around Thanksgiving. So we had a great off season, and um, you know I got to install my offense that uh, I had been um, getting really good at at Frankston, and then we went eight and four and um, that was a fun year. It was unbelievable. We had a lot of talent and we had talent coming back. And, um, so then the next year we went 12 and two and mm-hmm. um, then, we, then we went eight and four again. And when we went eight and four, we got beat by La Vega um, in the second round. And um, we had a coaches meeting and Seth brought me in. It's like, man, I'm, I'm going straight AD and uh, I want you to be the head football coach. And, you know, obviously was so honored just because of the fact that, Melissa was such a tradition, um, but, you know, just everything here, you have high expectations. And that's, you know, I mean, it's fun to be a part of that. It's not really fun to be a part of something that, you know, I mean, average is um, accepted and the average isn't accepted here. So there was some pressure with it, but I knew Seth was going to support me and support what uh, I was trying to do. Um, and so, I mean, it was just a blessing in disguise and that, because I did not want to leave Frankston. I wanted to be there. And um, it took a lot of prayer and whatnot and uh, kind of a kick in the pants to to take a shot and a, a chance um, at Melissa. And uh, I know that me and my family are very grateful for that opportunity. Seth Stanton, by the way, is the, the coach you're talking about. Now, one thing that I think sometimes we take for granted, I've mentioned Salina and Argyle. La Vega has been mentioned and others. This is a, a school that is very young came back, uh, I think, in existence, what, like an 04. There had been a right. massive, like, there was no Melissa football. Can you kind of right. get there? Back in, I think, 1913, there might have been a, a run back during, of course, the, the World Wars uh, over a couple of stretches. So what was the disconnect with football in Melissa High School? What happened there? Um, You know, football, Frank's, or Frankston, Melissa um, only had a junior half forever. Um, and the kids had an opportunity they could pick between going to high school in Anna or going to high school in McKinney. So, you know, 2000, I guess it was four, um, they decided that, Hey, you know, we're going to start a high school and they started a high school uh, and, uh, they started football with just freshmen and sophomores. Um, and then I think the, the next year or the year after that, they started playing a varsity schedule. Um, and uh, Rick Gagarin was the first head football coach here in Melissa, and he's still on staff. Um, and then uh, Coach Williams took over, um, and then Coach Stinton took over. And Coach Stinton, you know, has just made it into a kind of a powerhouse um, up here in the North Texas area. Um, and then I've had the luxury of, of taking over and – uh, honestly, I just get the best seat in the house on a Friday night. So, um, but yeah, it's been football. Melissa is a huge, yeah. huge thing. Yeah. And, uh, just a little bit North of McKinney as as you, you and I uh, asked about that earlier and you could have started in an area that's more deep, uh, to do it against that particular area where, where everyone else has been successful. To me, it's an amazing story. And like you mentioned, you wanted to stay in your hometown, but it's worked out for you, for you and the family as well. Matt, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I, I, I remember when you were at Frankston uh, and, and uh, when I sat there and I said, man, they beat Argyle and started getting in touch with you for the segment. I know you have Anna, right, coming up. Is that right? Right, right. Yes, sir. Good luck with that one, and, and also good luck with that tough district you're in, but congratulations. I'm glad you're enjoying the fruits of your labor, and also you're enjoying <laughs> your life as well, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Matt Nally, he's the head coach at Melissa. They just beat Argyle. Four and two on the year, Anna coming up, and back with the Elite Games in Texas High School Football Week number 7, Smokey.com presents the Texas High School Football Podcast Show. All roads lead to your largest selection of pre-owned in East Texas, 3306 West Grande in Tyler. It's time for a car buying experience you will enjoy at Peter's Auto Sports. Cars from ultimate luxury to affordable economy, trucks from work to play to all-out adventure. Come by 3306 West Grande in Tyler or visit us online at Peter's Auto Sports and take advantage of our nationwide delivery. It's all here. Peter's Auto Sports in Tyler.
For a limited time, refinance your vehicle and have 90 days with zero payments. Only at Genco FCU. Refinancing lowers your rate and you pay less for your car. You can't pass on rates as low as 1.75% for 48 months. Apply online today. Annual percentage rate subject to change without notice. Subject to credit approval, membership eligibility, and loan policies. Go to GencoFCU.org. NCUA Equal Housing Lender. My money, my future, my credit union. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. Welcome back to close out the Smokey.com Texas High School Football Podcast Show. Thanks to John King of Longview, Matt Nally, the head coach of Melissa. Good luck to both of them as the season progresses. Jerry Forrest and PigskinPrep.com. Every single Sunday afternoon or evening, I get an email from him. Here are the best games in the state of Texas based on his rating service that rates every single Football team in Texas, six man to six A, no matter what classification, UIL, public schools, private schools, and here are the elite games. The, the the number on the right, I say this every week, the lower the number, the better the game. Highland Park and Longview, we've discussed that with John King, his thoughts about Randy Allen and the stat that he threw out about Randy Allen and Highland Park. He's one hundred twelve and two at home. As head coach at Highland Park, that's just crazy. Private school game between Episcopal Parish Episcopal out of Dallas and Plano Prestonwood, that's on the list as well. If it's a single-digit game, you know it's amazing, but it still could be like some of the other ones as well. Stephenville and La Vega. Coach Doty's got Stephenville playing well again. And, and we know Don Hyde, how good they are. They just beat Corpus Christi Miller, had the off week. Before that, they lost to Argyle, 17-14. to Mart and Chilton. Chilton's kind of, Coach James has got them playing well. We know how good Mart is. Mart's still a heavy favorite. But that kind of brings back some days of old with Chilton being unbeaten. Salina and Aubrey. There's a few other games go down a couple. Jim Ned, I always mention whenever they're on the list, Tuscosa, Jim Ned, that's where Colt McCoy played his high school ball, and they have early in a battle of 5-0. and Here's a game down in the uh, Southeast Golden Triangle area. New Waverly, uh, they're, they're only a couple of touchdown underdog to the Newton Eagles, who are always so good. Newton coming off a year last year that just kind of was strange like some others. Because of COVID and delays. Franklin and Rogers. Franklin, they are just mauling people. Coach Fannin in his second year, they are beating people up. Ought to be interesting with Rogers and Charlie Rote. Remember that we featured one of his players earlier this year. Timpson and Garrison. One of the first games I ever covered back in 1981 when I was in local television in Lufkin, Texas at Channel 9 was Timpson and Garrison. It was. They've been playing each other for a long, long time. A couple of more down the list. How about West Orange, Stark, and Silsby? That's the 13th game listed. Also, uh, West Rusk. Remember we talked about that number 37 jersey because of the old explosion at the, uh, when, when they, the gas explosion on campus? West Rusk has ARP. ARP and Dale Irwin, they have not been good of late. Dale Irwin, one of the great people in the coaching business. I love it. The 4-2, and two, ARP still a very uh, big underdog in that game. And then there's Yo and Academy. Boy, Academy's done really well. Um, Chris Lancaster's done a great job. Former Baylor football coach on, the, on staff there at Baylor. Yo absolutely just hammered Rockdale. 60-23 to 23 in Rick Rhodes after a tough start. They're only... Two and four, but they're good, and they're a slight favorite against Academy. Coach Lancaster's got Academy playing pretty well. So those are the games, the best games of the week in week number seven of the Texas high school football season. All right, thanks again, as always, to Randy Peters and Peter Chevrolet, peterscars.com, our title sponsor of the show, Armstrong Sims, behind the scenes and what he does. 
Thanks to Melissa football coach Matt Nally, Longview's football coach John King, and thank you. Every Thursday, we debut this show. I don't debut it. We air this show on noon Thursday. Then it's available for as long as you want to watch it. I get on the chat room on occasion. Appreciate those of you who have a chance to, to look at it. Next week, we'll look ahead to week number eight and also look back at week number seven. For everyone I've mentioned, I'm David Smoke. Thank you for the Peters Chevrolet. Smokey.com, Texas high school football podcast, right here on 365 Sports.